take us through the presentation. After that, we'll have a question and answer where you can directly ask the question to someone. That is how we'll do it. Over to you. Yes. Very good morning, everybody, and sorry for this slight uh, technical glitch. I'm glad to be here and you know thought of talking to all of you on the finance strategy and uh, you know so that uh, you can get started on your finance strategy. So the objective of the session today, you know, what uh, I would like to touch upon is firstly see why you have a finance strategy. You know, how is it really going to help you as an entrepreneur? Is it even required? So let's uh, evaluate that. And of course, I know cash is something that gives a lot of nightmares for many entrepreneurs. So to see how you can manage your cash effectively, because cash is king uh, for all entrepreneurs. And of course, to see how I can kindle your thoughts on handling your finances, as because as an entrepreneur, it's extremely important for you to be taking charge of your finances and be in full control of it. So these are the three main areas that I'm planning to touch upon in today's webinar, right? So let's get started and you know deep dive into each of them. So first let's see what is finance strategy, right? So very simply put, it is to manage your financial resources. As an entrepreneur, you have different sorts of uh, resources you know uh, especially financially speaking it, it could be handling your cash it could be your debt your equity uh, it could be anything and everything to do with your finances so how are you managing your financial resources so that indicates a strategy so what is the plan that you have to manage your finance and the plan that you have to manage your finance it should be to pursue your business objectives. So that leaves us with the question is, what are your business objectives? What is it that you want your business to achieve? So both should be in sync with each other because they complement each other and they help you to achieve what you want your business to achieve. Right? So it's important to define your exact business objectives. And by defining your business objectives, your ultimate goal is to achieve your financial goals. So let's say, for example, one of your business objectives is to open up uh, newer markets, right, for your business, which is great, which is, you know, one of your business objectives. Now, financially speaking, even if you want to open, let's say, 10 new uh, outlets of your business, how does that translate in financial terms? So probably what is the extra capital that's required? What is the ROI you get out of it? What would be the profit that you're looking? How would it impact your cash flow? You know, on an overall level. So you need to have a plan in place. You need to define your objectives and thereby your financial goals and see how you're going to be achieving it. And that's what makes a finance strategy extremely important. Now, you may be under the impression that, you know, my organization is too small and therefore I may not need it. But the fact is a finance strategy is required for all businesses, irrespective of the size of your business. So you could be, you know, even a solopreneur, but still you need to have your business objectives and thereby defined financial uh, objectives that you want your business to achieve. So what is financial objectives, very simply put, it is to state what you want your business to achieve in financial terms. So it could be your top line, it could be your bottom line, it could be your headcount, it could be the number of customers, you can even subdivide it into geographies. So everything basically that's measurable and quantifiable, it is good to put a number to it. So have a plan and see how consistently you can keep achieving it. So that is mainly talking about your financial strategy. Very broadly speaking, finance strategy can be broadly classified into three, which is your financing decisions, your investment decisions, and your uh, dividend decisions. Now, I think today's session, I'm primarily going to be concentrating mainly on the finance part of it, because only if you have the finance, can you, you know, go ahead with your investments and your dividends. So let's focus mainly on the finance part of it on how you can strategize it, how you can develop and why it's even required and so on and so forth. So that's what we're going to be covering in today's session. So since we're focusing on finance part of it, so let's start off with financial management. And uh, 
what is financial management you know what is the strategy that will go inside it for any business you should have your revenue and obviously your expenses so what is the methodology that you are adopting to manage them when i say to manage you know what are your revenue streams by when are you expecting revenue to start ticking in for you how are you planning to deploy you know your expenses how are you going to sustain your expenses till the time the revenue starts ticking in right and even after you have sufficient revenue how are you going to manage to pay off all your suppliers on time how are you deciding on what expenses are crucial for your business what is the return on your expenses that you're going to get you know when i say return on expenses for example you may decide as an entrepreneur for your business it's really good for you to invest uh, in uh, marketing expenses so by investing in marketing you know that there's going to be a return so that it makes sense for you probably to spend on marketing but it may not really make sense for you right now to spend on something else that is uh, let's say having a plush office or getting a luxury car for your uh, organization so what is the return on expense that you are expecting by spending the desired amount so every aspect of your finance needs to be you know totally thought about and planned and you to be consistent in your approach till such a time that you are able to reach your financial goals and it has to be very consistent so it's not like you know this year you achieve your financial goals and next year you take your hands off the accelerator It doesn't work like that so you need to be a lot consistent in your approach and of course your assets and liabilities because they belong to your business so how are you managing your assets and liabilities so assets obviously definitely includes your cash your cash management which we will see and i have a separate slide on it so that part what is the kind of returns that your uh, assets are giving you if let's say you are you have invested in uh, big equipment so what is the return that you are getting it how efficiently are you utilizing all your assets in place or it could be even your inventory how are you managing your inventory you know are you spending too much on logistics warehousing transportation and other things so like you notice know, they're all interlinked and when it comes to your liabilities are you able to pay your suppliers and vendors on time so what is the policy that you have in place by when do you want to uh, you know uh, pay everybody so everything on your finance platter should have specific objectives specific plans and specific methodology that you give into it then of course are your financial controls so what are the controls that you have in place uh, while you know you are the uh, the owner of the business can let's say anybody else in your team uh, approve a purchase order for example can they sign on behalf of the organization and uh, get people procure things for the organization do they have the authority or simple things like uh, do you have a system of having a dual signatory for uh, making your bank payments you know maybe it's you and your co-founder together but what are the mandates that you have or do you have specific limits like say up to a certain amount one signatory and over and above a certain amount it needs to have dual signatories so what are the controls financial controls that you have in place because without having controls it wouldn't help you at all because anybody and everybody can you know mismanage and uh, uh, it could lead, lead to a lot of fraud and theft as well so you need to define specific controls and the best i would say is to document them and keep it so that there's no ambiguity and everybody knows you know where one needs to go to handle it then very important is your financial decision making skills now since you're the owner you have the a uh, complete authority to decide on all financial matters so let's say you're getting a new project does it make financial sense for you for your business to even go ahead or are you in a better off position to decline it so since you are the owner the onus is on you you need to take the right sort of decisions to see how is going to help your business in growth or you know maybe it's going to give you some goodwill or whatever it is the thing is you need to understand the financial impact it has on your business any decision that you take for your business first thing you evaluate the financial part of it so financially if it makes sense it's giving you a good uh, profit or it's making you cash positive definitely those are good 
pointers for you. But let's say hypothetically, it's not giving you a good margin or you know you don't see a great benefit in it directly. You may then want to relook at other factors, like you know probably let's say it's it's a good brand to have for you to showcase them as your customer. So maybe you're willing to forego a little bit of profit. You know, let's say normally your gross margins are at 15% and this particular uh, prospective customer is giving you only 7%. You may still take a decision to go ahead with them because it is good to have their brand on your portfolio. While that is fine, you still need to evaluate. You need to be sure, you need to be aware that and take a conscious call. So that aspect becomes important and that's why it's, very important for you to know the financial implication of each and every business decision of yours. So that is uh, the key to uh, financial uh, decision making as well. Moving on, let's see why it's important to have financial strategy. Do we even need to have, how are you going to get benefited um, by having such things in place? So obviously, you know, uh, it gives you a competitive advantage because a finance strategy is what tells you what your future plans are. You know, I'm sure your business exists with an objective to make profit. You're not here for charity. You're not here to donate, uh, you know, your proceeds. So you are here to make profits as a business. So for you to have a competitive edge, it helps to have a finance strategy because you know what you want your business to achieve. Otherwise, it's like groping in the dark, being like a headless chicken. So for you to have a clear sense of direction and know the path ahead, which thereby translates to having a competitive advantage. You can eliminate unwanted distractions and you can focus on the goals that you want to achieve. So now if you set yourself, like let's say you want your top line to be at, an X amount, you know, you can steadily work towards it. And also, let's say you want uh, um, a margin of 5%, you know, you'll then start thinking on those lines. You will see how you can maximize your revenue, how you can decrease your costs, and then work towards it. So all your actions, your business actions will be uh, focused towards that. So you're building synergies within the team and everybody is on the same page and moving forward together. So thereby you have specific goals. You're able to cut out unwanted things and achieve what you really want to achieve. And obviously this then starts to translate to increasing your profits, which is one of the, I think, key objectives of any business. And of course, if you have sufficient profits, if you have a lot of debts, you can reduce your debt and pay them off on time. And you're also ensuring how to efficiently use all your resources that you have. So resources is vast. I mean, you know, it, it could be uh, your equipment, it could be your people, it could be the capital. So it, anything and everything is a resource that you have that helps you achieve your uh, business goals. So. You have to ensure that you're utilizing all of your resources efficiently so that you're deriving the most out of each of them. So let's have a small uh, quiz uh, to just ensure everybody's uh, uh, here, you know, listening to this. So very quickly, you can type in your answers, a very easy question coming up your way. What does financial statements comprise of? So I'll probably give you a minute. You can quickly type in in your chat box and Sunil, can I request you to read them out for us, please? Sure, sure. sure, sure. Guys, please type Guys, in your answer in the chat box. Uh, Pandan states assets and liabilities. Okay, so what is it called? Okay, good. So your one part of the answer is right. No, it has a specific name to it. Come on, guys. Subin says uh, revenue, asset, profit, and loss. Okay. Okay. So typically what is called the financial statement, uh, the, the first top three, which is the balance sheet, which is nothing but 
the one that reflects your assets and liabilities and your income statement which is your p and l and your cash flow statement these three are the primary things when you say financial statement you need to look at all these three and these are normally supported by the statement of shareholders equity and notes to financial statements so it is as the business owner you should know that you know you need to look at your balance sheet your income statement and your cash flow statement right let's move on so how to develop finance strategies right so let me give you some okay i'm a i'm a very acronym person because i think that helps in easy retention so i have come up uh, with an acronym for this as well so i have it's to make it easy for you to remember i have kept strategy as an acronym so s stands for shareholders value to be maximized so when you're developing your finance strategy your ultimate objective should be that your shareholders value is maximized now you may say that i don't have a shareholder the business is mine i'm a bootstrap startup great it just simply means that you are the shareholder right so who is the business owner it's you in this case so you need to ensure the value of your business is maximized so all your financial transactions and all that you want to think of and plan ahead the ultimate aim and the objective of it should be to maximize your shareholders uh, returns that you plan to get right so s is for that now how do you go about doing it p i say stands for the tools that are utilized to measure when i say tools it could be things like to have an accounting software in place to look at your mis to review your financial statements to have a budget in place it could be like a cash forecast so what are the different tools that you're deploying to ensure that uh, you know you're measuring and uh, how your finance how you're tracking your finances in place so have some uh, you know uh, or you have the procedures in place so that you can utilize these tools and measure them accordingly r for roi roi is nothing but your return on investment so the return on investment has to keep increasing so the investment need not necessarily be just in terms of finance it could also be in terms of the time and the effort of you and your team how are you you know ensuring that your uh, roi is increasing in each of these fronts what is the plan that you have in place how are you ensuring you you know getting the most out of each of your resources how are you monitoring it how are you measuring it and you know what is the roi that you are expecting in each of these aspects of your business is something that you need to think over a i say is to analyze when i say analyze analyze your financial parameters it could be the ratios it could also be for you to say you know where am i right now in finance terms like how how do i move from here or am i getting stuck or am i even going backwards so analyze how your business is performing in financial terms so that you have a clear picture you know there's no ambiguity it's not like you're stuck or you know you're in the dark so you need to have a clear picture and that you can get by analyzing for example simple things like analyzing your monthly you know, p&l statements you know could reveal a lot to you the numbers actually would speak to you so you know what is it reflecting where is my profit being sucked what is my highest cost what is the revenue per employee i'm making what is the profit per employee that i'm having so analyze various aspects look at various ratios and see what where you lack and how you can develop further t i say stands for targets so the targets that you are setting for yourself that is for your business should firstly be realistic so see how you are planning to achieve the set targets uh, it's important to take into account the time factor as well you know you can't uh, say that you know i will achieve this in 10 years time like for instance if uh, uh, let's say uh, you know you you coming up with a new phone you can't come and introduce like a nokia model or something right now in the age of a touch screen right so time and place are very important factors so you need to set your sub targets by when what you want to achieve both in financial terms and for your business so set realistic targets e is to evaluate your performance so how is your business faring now what was the budget that you had said 
where where are you in actual terms and you know what is the variance what has caused this difference in your finance so why is it that you were not able to achieve the set targets um, what are your financial statements revealing about you what is your uh, uh, the progress that you're making you know why is it let's say you have a good gross margin percentage but your net margin is not sufficient what is causing these gaps so you need to look at it from various angles especially in financial terms if you want to see your business to grow financially so you're evaluating the performance and seeing at the same time how you can improve performance g is for the goals that you want to achieve so we spoke about the importance of goals to have the goal so once you have set them how are you going about achieving it so financially let's say you have set yourself certain targets you know which is what you want your business to achieve like year on year uh, to say you know in the next two years this is what i'm going to achieve the next five years is what i'm going to achieve so once you have set that you can work towards that and ensure that there is a step by step progress you're doing and how often that you need to do you have to do it year on year so for each year set your some specific goals specific targets both in financial terms and in business objectives and you go about seeing how you're going to achieve them year on year so your growth should be consistent as well so each year you should be growing at a, a periodic pace and how are you building your financial strategy towards it so does it mean that you need to have extra capital or you know you so are you planning to reinvest some of the profits into the business or you know do you want to raise equity or do you want to go in for a debt what is the plan that you have so it is always good to you know uh, put a pen and paper down to it and especially if it's you and your uh, you know you have a co-founder along with you it's very important that both of you sit together and uh, think through it and you know actually write it down so that you know you know that both of you are thinking on the same lines and you can take thereby take the necessary steps involved to achieve what you want to achieve so that is on developing a financial strategy so let's look at another short quiz so do you know the difference between tax evasion and tax planning so again you could please type it out in your chat box any answers sunil okay aden aden bhutia states tax evasion is about saving on tax and tax planning is setting aside money for it we are not fully right there is a lot of difference anybody else wants to try not yet guys please type in your answers probably it's a little tough so let me go ahead and share with you the main difference between the two is the intent because tax evasion is when you want to cheat and you know you don't want to pay your taxes but tax planning is when you're actually planning and you know ensuring that the amount that you're paying is lesser than what you're supposed to pay so the key difference is the intent and the legality tax evasion is illegal because you are not paying your taxes whereas tax planning is you are planning your taxes based on the uh, the permitted rules that you know you are allowed to do certain things so that is important for you to know the difference and of course the liability because the tax burden becomes lesser once you have planned it correctly and the right person who can help you with it is probably your uh, tax consultant or your auditor who are you consulting for your taxes but it's important that you know this difference yeah so let's move on to the cash management uh, which is i know very crucial for all entrepreneurs irrespective of your size of business you know when i was writing my book what the finance i had spoken to many entrepreneurs and one common thread you know be it a startup or uh, be it you know a huge business 
Like I've interviewed and have stories of many other entrepreneurs as well. So the most common thread was the cash. They were like, I'm having sleepless nights. How do I pay my next month's salaries on time? So I do uh, you know, realize and acknowledge that cash is very, very crucial. So let me give you some tips on to see how you can effectively manage your cash. So first, have a cash budget in place, right? Like how you're preparing your p &L budget. I think it's very important for you to prepare a month on month or a, or a weekly basis or you know whatever the frequency of your uh, the cash rotation is to prepare it uh, a cash budget so that you know what is going to be your money coming in and money going out and thereby you can plan accordingly and you're not like you know over committing. To, Let's say you want to uh, probably try, uh, purchase a new, the latest computer system for your business. It is required, definitely. But then when is the right time to buy? When do you have the sufficient cash surplus? It shouldn't be a case like, you know, you're able to buy all the, the fancy equipment that you want for your business, which is good for the growth, but then you don't have the cash to pay your salaries or, you know, your electricity bills. So you need to learn to prioritize and differentiate between the two. So therefore have a cash budget in place as a first step. Obviously you need to manage your cash and how can you manage your cash? So let me give you with another acronym here. Remember cash for cash. So C stands for collect on time. You know, when uh, you have rendered the services to your customers, ensure you follow up and you have to receive your money on time. You know, the, the later you delay it, the chances of recovery becomes lesser. So collect within the set time, whatever is every time frame that you have, collect it on time. A, anticipate your inflow and outflow. So once you know how much is the money coming in, let's say you're expecting a particular customer to pay you after two months. So you know that the X amount of rupees is going to come from your customer in two months time. And then you need to pay uh, you know, your outflows while you can control your outflows. Your inflows is not directly under your control. So when you're uh, preparing uh, your budget or you know, anticipating it, your inflows can be in a conservative manner, but outflows stick to reality. Right? And you need to systematically monitor your cash situation because you never know when there could be an emergency in your business. So you need to know and you need to have on the top of your head, you know, what is the amount of cash that you have and, uh, you know, foresee your um, cash movement so that for that you need to systematically keep monitoring your cash. H is to create the habit of cash reserve because you never know when there could be an emergency in your business or when there's a rainy day or let's say a taxman suddenly comes to you with a tax liability and you know, wants you to pay up the amount immediately. So you never know when what would happen or probably one of your customers is having a, a your big customers having a, a bad time and you know, for whatever reason says, I'm not able to pay you on time. So it's always good to have a cash reserve which comes into uh, cases of emergency. So ensure that you collect on time, you're able to anticipate your inflow and outflow, monitor your cash period I mean, you know, regularly and have the habit of creating a cash reserve. So as an entrepreneur, you, for you it's both the cash profit is important as well as the book profit is important because cash profit is what is required to run your day-to-day -day business operations and book profit is what your auditor signs off and uh, that's what you know your investors would look into or if you want to go for a bank loan the bankers are going to look into that so both become quite important for you as an entrepreneur so you know, it's same transactions. So why is there a difference between your cash profit and your book profit? So let me give you some pointers on why this comes. You know, you have non-cash items, depreciation, for example, where there is no cash movement that is there. So it doesn't impact your cash profit, but it has an impact on your book profit. Next is the timing difference. Uh, let's say at the end of the year, you have raised some invoice in your customer, right? And the customer pays you two months thereafter. Mm -hmm. So the invoice that you raise becomes revenue. So your book profit goes up, but cash, there is no change. So the cash profit as in the cash will pick in only when your customer pays. So there's a timing difference that happens. And 
books are normally maintained on accrual system of accounting. So at the year end, you know, some of the bills may become due. You would have to provide for gratuity for your uh, employees, provision for leave salary, provision for unpaid bills. So all that will come in, but then there is no cash moment. Right. So these are some differences that causes the difference between the cash profit and the book profit. So as a big takeaway, what should be your action mantra? Right. So as an entrepreneur, you need to administer. Right? You need to administer your assets. How are your assets functioning? What is the return that you're getting on your assets? Uh, how productive are your assets? What is the capacity utilization? When I say assets, it's not just you know your physical uh, uh, equipment and stuff. I definitely think your people are your biggest assets. You know, I have been to uh, Scotland. And there were these huge posters that said, uh, people make Glasgow. So like that, your people are the ones who make your business. They are the face of your business. That's why I always like to call them as human capital. So they are your biggest assets because you know, they are the ones who are actually doing what your business needs to do. So you need to administer you know, both your team as well as your uh, Assets, including your cash, right? Because your cash is a biggest asset. So how well are you and how efficiently are you administering your assets? C, for your customer, your customer management. Because at the end of the day, it's a human-to-human -human relation. So how good is your rapport with your customer? C, again, I have mentioned, you know, brackets cash, although cash is technically an asset for you. But since cash is so important and you know cash is vital for any business, see you can also remember it as cash.